Hey, it's me. Today we're going to talk about stuff. A lot of stuff. Like invertebrates, 3D rendering, new animations, new monsters, hats, weapons, screen physics, pixel art, and more. Wow. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. Or actually, the lack of an elephant. So I made an elephant man. But more about him later. When I uploaded my last video, I had 2,500 subscribers and was hoping to break 3,000. I am happy to report that I have passed 3,000 subscribers. Thank you. There are also a couple articles written about my game on Polygon and PC Gamer. A lot of comments pointed out that the dog's animation looked really odd, like it looked like a salamander wearing a dog suit or something. So I set out to fix the dog animation and this exploded into an enormous task. So an issue I've been having for a long time is the legs twisting too much as they bend. If you take a 3D model and twist any joint too far, you'll get a weird pinching at the joint. My monsters are so low resolution this wasn't really a problem since it was barely visible, but the legs would occasionally do complete 180s and the leg texture would flip from one side to the other. Now the obvious solution is, well, just don't let the legs turn that far, limit the joint range. And I tried that and it worked sometimes, but I still had the issue of the legs twisting too much even though they were technically within the range. Limiting the joint range also broke something because occasionally the limbs would get lost and they couldn't find their way to the destination. So they would overshoot where they wanted to go and then they couldn't find their way back. There's probably a simple solution, but after I noticed the body started clipping in itself occasionally too, I just decided to look for an entirely different solution. So like almost every 2D or 3D game, I'm using polygons. I thought maybe I could try voxels instead, but smooth voxel animations aren't really well documented since no one uses them. I looked further to some alternative to polygons and voxels, and that's when I found sine distance fields, or SDFs. So polygons work by defining three points to make a triangle. But SDFs usually only use one point in a distance function for a geometric shape. To explain a little better, for every pixel on the screen you're doing a distance check. Whenever the distance minus the radius of the circle is negative, that's inside the circle. Anything positive is outside. That's why it's called sine distance field. The distance is either positive or negative. Circles, ovals, squares, and really any shape that can be defined by a geometric function can be made pretty easily. This same principle applies to 3D too. There is some complicated math needed to set up the 3D projection code, but thankfully a 3D guy named the Snyder already made an example to get me started. So this is what a 3D SDF looks like, and with some basic lighting it looks like this. Wow. And if you apply a little sinusoidal displacement and mixing of the shapes, you can get jelly. Now we can make circles, squares, blobs, or basic shapes. But then, how do you turn a geometric shape into this? Easy. We just make tubes. We make tubes and stick them together. Cylinders are easy to make in SDFs, so we just stick a bunch of them together and it kind of looks like a snake. So let's put this back into my game. And that's where things went bad. Because my game was kind of a pseudo 3D, the 3D matrix projection code no longer worked and I couldn't get any SDF to show up on my screen at all. After being stuck for a few days, I politely messaged the guy that made the original example and asked him for help. And he responded, oh, we'll just change this projection code to this. Easy stuff. He also has a YouTube channel if you're into advanced 3D stuff with Game Maker. So I changed my code and it didn't work. Oh no! Finally, after a lot of revisions, I finally had a worm. And if I stuck a few worms together, I now had a complete SDF monster. It doesn't look that different from polygons, but it looks a little rounder. And I no longer have issues with the clipping or twisting that I was with polygons. Polygons? Polygon! <laughs> and a couple of the cool effects I can do are jelly. <laughs> and transparency, which is pretty cool. I know that was only like a minute or two of video, but getting the SDFs and all the effects to work was a real headache. I spent well over a month coding it. SDFs aren't used in games very often because they're pretty slow, but since I only use the SDF shader on a very small portion of the screen that a monster's in, it had no difference in performance between a polygon and an SDF. And now, finally, we can go back to fixing the dog animations. So I wanted the dog to gallop instead of walk, but at first the legs kept getting in sync like this. This is terrible. Then I wanted to make his shoulders bounce, which didn't work at all at first, but after a couple of missteps I got it looking pretty good. So here's what I did in summary. First, I changed his walk into a gallop. Then I gave his tail a wobble. And then his head a bobble. And then his shoulder hobbled. It still needs some tweaking, but it's a definite improvement. 
And here it is compared to the old Polygon version. Now let's talk about invertebrates. I had several people point out that invertebrates make up over 98% of all animals on Earth, so why do I have so few? I need more. So I made a stretchy slug. Playing with his stretchiness was pretty fun. And I also made a centipede, a scorpion, and a blue beetle thing. Now let's go back to the elephant. He was pretty straightforward, but his trunk was too rigid. So I made a wobbly tower using some spring physics, and then I applied that to his trunk. Now it wobbles back and forth when you suddenly move or stop. Cool. And then I gave the elephant a super stylish hat and a weapon for extra coolness. Hats, hats, hats. I also did a lot of pixel art. Not much to say about these, but there they are. And let's talk about the name of the game again. Crossbreeder X? More like Crossbreeder X, you know what I mean? I did read over a lot of the comments and some of the suggestions I really liked, but Critter Crossers seem to be pretty popular, so I'm gonna go with that for now because it's easy to remember and kinda catchy. And best for last, I made a fashionable frogman. He flicks his tongue out randomly and sometimes just lets it hang. His attire also matches his tongue, of course. This video was supposed to be about monster combat, but I already had so much content I figured I'd just post it anyway. Bye.